Rajavidya, the king of knowledge. Chapter 3 Knowledge of Krishna's Energies It may be noted at this point that the ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita is especially meant for those who have already accepted Sri Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In other words, it is meant for his devotees. If one does not accept Sri Krishna as the Supreme, this ninth chapter will appear as something different from what it actually is. As stated in the beginning, the subject matter of the ninth chapter is the most confidential material in the entire Bhagavad Gita. If one doesn't accept Krishna as the Supreme, he will think the chapter to be a mere exaggeration. This is especially the case with the verses dealing with Krishna's relationship with his creation. Maya tatam idam sarvam jagat avyakta murtina matsthani sarva bhutani nachaham teshvavastitaha By me, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. Bhagavad Gita verse 9.4 The world which we see is also Krishna's energy, his maya. Here, maya means by me, as if one says, this work has been done by me. This by me does not mean that he has done his work and has finished or retired. If I start a large factory and say, this factory was started by me, in no case should it be concluded that I am lost or in any way not present. Although a manufacturer may refer to his products as being manufactured by me, it does not mean that he personally created or constructed his product, but that the product was produced by his energy. Similarly, if Krishna says, Whatever you see in the world was created by me. We are not to suppose that he is no longer existing. It is not very difficult to see God everywhere in the creation, for he is everywhere present. Just as in the Ford factory, the workers see Mr. Ford in every corner. Those who are conversant with the signs of Krishna can see him in every atom of the creation. Everything is resting on Krishna. Matsthani Sarva Bhutani Bhagavad Gita verse 9.4 But Krishna is not there. Nachaham Teshva Vastitaha Krishna and his energy are non-different, yet the energy is not Krishna. The sun and the sunshine are not different. But the sunshine is not the sun. The sunshine may come through our window and enter our room. But this is not to say that the sun is in our room. The Vishnu Purana states, Parasya Brahmana Shaktihi. Parasya means supreme, Brahmanaha means absolute, truth and Shaktihi means energy. The energy of the Supreme Absolute is everything, but in that energy, Krishna is not to be found. There are two kinds of energy, material and spiritual. Jivas or individual souls belong to the superior energy of Krishna, but because they are prone to be attracted to the material energy, they are called marginal energy. But actually, there are only two energies. All of the planetary systems and universes are resting on the energies of Krishna. Just as all the planets in the solar system are resting in the sunshine, everything within the creation is resting on Krishna shine. All of these potencies of the Lord give pleasure to a devotee, but one who is envious of Krishna rejects them. When one is a non-devotee, the statements of Krishna seem to be so much bluff. 
But when one is a devotee, he thinks, Oh, my Lord is so powerful and he becomes filled with love and adoration. Non-devotees think that because Krishna says, I am God, they and everyone else can say the same. But if asked to show their universal form, they cannot do it. That is the difference between a pseudo-god and the real god. Krishna's pastimes cannot be imitated. Krishna married over 16,000 wives and kept them nicely in 16,000 palaces. But an ordinary man cannot even keep one wife nicely. It is not that Krishna just spoke so many wonderful things. He also acted wonderfully. He, we should not believe one thing that Krishna says or does and reject another. If belief is there, it must be full belief. In this regard, there is a story of Narada Muni who was once asked by a Brahmana, Oh, you are going to meet the Lord? Will you please ask him when I am going to get my salvation? All right, Narada agreed. I shall ask him. As Narada proceeded, he met a cobbler who was sitting under a tree mending shoes. And the cobbler similarly asked Narada, Oh, you are going to see God? Will you please inquire of him when my salvation will come? When Narada Muni went to the Vaikuntha planets, he fulfilled their request and asked Narayana, God, about the salvation of the Brahmana and the cobbler and Narayana replied, After leaving this body, the cobbler shall come here to me. What about the Brahmana? Narada asked. He will have to remain there for a number of births. I do not know when he is coming. Narada Muni was astonished and he finally said, I cannot understand the mystery of this. That you will see, Narayana said. When they ask you what I am doing in my abode, tell them that I am threading the eye of a needle with an elephant. When Narada returned to earth and approached the Brahmana, the Brahmana said, Oh, you have seen the Lord. What was he doing? He was threading an elephant through the eye of a needle. Narada answered, I don't believe such nonsense, the Brahmana replied. Narada could immediately understand that the man had no faith and that he was simply a reader of books. Narada then left and went on to the cobbler who asked him, Oh, have you seen the Lord? Tell me, what was he doing? He was threading an elephant through the eye of a needle. Narada replied. The cobbler began to weep. Oh, my Lord is so wonderful. He can do anything. Do you really believe that the Lord can push an elephant through the hole of a needle? Narada asked. Why not? The cobbler said. Of course I believe it. How is that? You can see that I am sitting under this banyan tree. The cobbler answered. And you can see that so many fruits are falling daily. And in each seed there is a banyan tree like this one. If within a small seed there can be a big tree like this, is it difficult to accept that the Lord is pushing an elephant through the eye of a needle? So this is called faith. It is not a question of blindly believing. There is reason behind the belief. If Krishna can put a large tree within so many little seeds, is it so astounding that he is keeping all the planetary systems floating in space through his energy? Although scientists may think that the planets are being held in space simply by nature alone, behind nature there is the Supreme Lord. Nature is acting under His guidance. As Krishna states, Maya dhyakshena prakriti suyate sacharacharam hetunanena kaunteya jagat vipari vartate 
this material nature is working under my direction o son of kunti and is producing all moving and unmoving beings by its rule this manifestation is being created and annihilated again and again bhagavad gita verse 9.10 Maya dhyakshena means under my supervision material nature cannot act so wonderfully unless the lord's hand is behind it we cannot give any example of material things automatically working matter is inert and without the spiritual touch there is no possibility of its acting matter cannot act independently or automatically machines may be wonderfully constructed but unless a man touches that machine it cannot work and what is that man he is a spiritual spark without spiritual touch nothing can move therefore everything is resting on krishna's impersonal energy krishna's energy is impersonal but he is a person We often hear of persons performing wonderful actions yet despite their energetic accomplishments they still remain persons if this is possible for human beings why isn't it possible for the supreme lord we are all persons but we are all dependent upon krishna the supreme person we have often seen pictures of atlas a stout man bearing a large planet on his shoulders and struggling very hard to hold it up we may think that because krishna is maintaining the universe he is struggling under its burden like atlas but this is not the case nachamat sthani bhutani pashyame yogameshwaram bhuta brinna cha bhutasto mamatma bhuta bhavanah and yet everything that is created does not rest in me behold my mystic opulence although i am the maintainer of all living entities and although i am everywhere still myself is the very source of creation bhagavad gita 9.5 Although all beings in the universe are resting in Krishna's energy still they are not in him Krishna is maintaining all living entities and his energy is all pervading yet he is elsewhere this is Krishna's inconceivable mystic power he is everywhere yet he is aloof from everything we can perceive his energy but we cannot see him because he cannot be seen with material eyes however when we develop our spiritual qualities we sanctify our senses so that even within this energy we can see him electricity for instance is everywhere and an electrician is capable of utilizing it similarly the energy of the supreme lord is everywhere and when we become transcendently situated we can see god eye to eye everywhere that spiritualization of the senses is possible through devotional service and love of god the lord is all pervading all over the universe and is within the soul the heart water air everywhere thus if we make an image of god in anything clay stone wood or whatever it should not be considered to be just a doll that also is god if we have sufficient devotion the image will also speak to us god is everywhere impersonally maya tatam idam sarvam bhagavad gita verse 9.4 but if we make his personal form from anything or if we create an image of god within ourselves he will be present personally for us in the shastras there are eight kinds of images recommended 
and any kind of image can be worshipped because God is everywhere. One may protest and ask, why should God be worshipped in images and not in his original spiritual form? The answer is that we cannot see God immediately in his spiritual form. With our material eyes, we can only see stone, earth, wood, something tangible. Therefore, Krishna comes as Archa Vigraha, a form conveniently presented by the Supreme Lord in order for us to see Him. The result is that if we concentrate upon the image and make offerings with love and devotion, Krishna will respond through the image. There are many instances of this happening. In India, there is one temple called Sakshi Gopala. Krishna is often called Gopala. The Gopala Murti or statue was at one time located in a temple in Vrindavana. Once, two Brahmanas, one old and one young, went to visit Vrindavana on a pilgrimage. It was a long trip and in those days there were no railways. So travellers underwent many hardships. The old man was much obliged to the youth for helping him on the journey. And upon arriving in Vrindavana, he said to him, My dear boy, you have rendered me so much service and I am much obliged to you. I would like very much to return that service and give you some reward. My dear sir, the youth said, you are an old man just like my father. It is my duty to serve you. I don't require any reward. No, I am obliged to you and I must reward you, the old man insisted. He then promised to give the young man his young daughter in marriage. The old man was a very rich man and the youth, although a learned brahmana, was very poor. Considering this, the youth said, Don't promise this, for your family will never agree. I am such a poor man and you are aristocratic, so this marriage will not take place. Don't promise this way before the deity. The conversation was taking place in the temple before the deity of Gopala Krishna and the young man was anxious not to offend the deity. However, despite the youth's pleas, the old man insisted on the marriage. After staying in Vrindavana for some time, they finally returned home and the old man informed his eldest son that his young sister was to be married to the poor Brahmana youth. The eldest son became very angry. Oh. How have you selected that pauper as husband for my sister? This cannot be. The old man's wife also came to him and said, If you marry our daughter to that boy, I shall commit suicide. The old man was thus perplexed. After some time, the Brahmana youth became very anxious. He has promised to marry his daughter to me and he made that promise before the deity. Now he is not coming to fulfill it. He then went to see the old man to remind him of his promise. You promised before Lord Krishna, the youth said, and you are not fulfilling that promise. How is that? The old man was silent. He began praying to Krishna for he was perplexed. He didn't want to marry his daughter to the youth and cause such great trouble within his family. In the meantime, the elder son came out and began to accuse the Brahmana youth. You have plundered my father in the place of pilgrimage. You gave him some intoxicant and took all his money. And now you are saying that he has promised to offer you my youngest sister, you rascal. In this way there was much noise and people began to gather. The youth could understand that the old man was still agreeable but that the family was making it difficult for him. People began to gather about because of the noise which the elder son was raising 
and the brahmana youth began to exclaim to them that the old man made this promise before the deities but that he could not fulfill it because the family was objecting the eldest son who was an atheist suddenly interrupted the youth and said you say that the lord was witnessing well if he comes and bears witness to this promise of my fathers you can have my sister in marriage the youth replied yes i shall ask krishna to come as a witness he was confident that god would come an agreement was then made before everyone that the girl would be given in marriage if krishna came from vrindavana as a witness to the old man's promise the brahmana youth returned to vrindavana and began to pray to gopala krishna dear lord you must come with me he was such a staunch devotee that he spoke to krishna just as one would speak to a friend he was not thinking that the gopala was a mere statue or image but he considered him to be god himself suddenly the deity spoke to him how do you think that i can go with you i am a statue i cannot go anywhere well if a statue can speak he can also walk the boy replied all right then the deity said finally i shall go with you but on one condition in no case shall you look back to see me i will follow you and you will know that i am following by the jingle of my leg bangles the youth agreed and in this way they left vrindavana to go to the other town when the trip was nearly over just as they were about to enter his home village the youth could no longer hear the sound of the bangles and he began to fear oh where is krishna unable to contain himself any longer he looked back he saw the statue standing still because he looked back it would go no further he immediately ran into the town and told the people to come out and see krishna who had come as a witness everyone was astounded that such a large statue had come from such a distance and they built a temple on the spot in honor of the deity and today people are still worshiping sakshi gopala the lord as a witness we should therefore conclude that because god is everywhere he is also in his statue in the image made of him if krishna is everywhere as even the impersonalists admit then why isn't he in his image whether an image or statue speaks to us or not is dependent on the degree of our devotion but if we choose to see the image merely as a piece of wood or stone krishna will always remain wood or stone for us krishna is everywhere but as we advance in spiritual consciousness we can begin to see him as he is if we put a letter into a mailbox it will go to its destination because the mailbox is authorized similarly if we worship an authorized image of god our faith will have some effect if we are prepared to follow the various rules and regulations that is to say if we become qualified it is possible to see god anywhere and everywhere when a devotee is present krishna by his omni present energies will manifest himself anywhere and everywhere but when his devotee is not there he will not do this there are many instances of this prahlad maharaja saw krishna in a pillar there are many other examples krishna is there all that is required is our qualification to see him krishna himself gives an example of his omnipresence in this way yatha kashasthito nityam vayu sarvatra go mahan tatha sarvani bhutani matsthani tyupadharaya as the mighty wind blowing everywhere always rests in ethereal space know that in the same manner 
all beings rest in me bhagavad gita verse 9.6 everyone knows that the wind blows within space and on earth it is blowing everywhere there is no place where there is no air or wind if we wish to drive out air we have to create a vacuum artificially by some machine just as the air is blowing everywhere in space so everything is existing within krishna if this is the case when the material creation is dissolved where does it go sarva bhutani kaunteya prakritim yanti mamikam kalpakshaye punastani kalpadavrishjamyaham o son of kunti at the end of the millennium every material manifestation enters into my nature and at the beginning of another millennium by my potency i again create bhagavad gita verse 9.7 krishna sets his nature prakriti into motion as one may wind up a clock and when nature unwinds it is absorbed into the lord the spiritual creation however is not like this for it is permanent in the material creation everything is temporary just as our bodies are developing due to the spiritual spark that is within the whole creation is coming into being developing and passing out of being due to the spirit of the lord which is within it just as our spirit is present within the body the lord is present within the universe as paramatma due to the presence of shirodakshai vishnu the material creation exists just as due to our presence our bodies are existing sometimes krishna manifests the material creation and sometimes he does not in all cases its existence is due to his presence